Hello? Hello? Hang on a sec, let me... Bloody hell. Let me get rid of the ridiculous speed call. Okay, welcome back to Pain Light Fiend, hopefully the penultimate episode. Uh, so what I'm going to do this time is I've been leaving, um, well I guess one of the more interesting parts till last. Well it'll be interesting to paint or video, I don't know. Uh, but the sword, which rather than choosing a metallic colour, I'm going to paint it in a sort of very dark kind of jade green with hopefully kind of bright glowing highlights, make it look kind of magical or warp stone like. Um, so it's been base coated in a, in a dark green, I took a few base coats on that. Now this is still a bit uh, too light to give a good contrast so I'm going to shade it down a few times with uh, maybe just a black wash or maybe a mixture of black wash and thin black paint, see how it goes. Uh, this will tone down the colour and it should bring out some of the, uh, accentuate some of the recesses. I'm going to be quite careful around the gold here, but if I do go over that, as long as I don't go too far, I should be able to just touch up the edge highlighting on the gold, bring that back. Maybe the wash might have a slight sheen to it, in which case I'll, I'll mix in some uh, black paint which should be uh, more matte. Now he let it dry, always my favourite part of the video. <laughs> okay so that wash took nicely, I'm going to repeat that but I'm going to try something else as well, I want to kind of get some rough brighter colour going on and see what areas it's going to go on. So what would be a really stupid idea to go with a kind of decent quality paint like this it would be dry brushing but it can have its role if you're careful with it. The trick is you're not trying to get a proper good highlight like you would to use it on fur or sand or the base or what have you. You're just trying to get a little bit of colour on there catch the edges see what it's going to look like overall. So to do that it needs to be dry, it needs to be as dry as Asahi Super Dry, which is a decent beer by the way. So there we go, that very little bit of paint coming off there. So I'm just going to do the so you can actually, I don't know if it comes out on camera but it's actually picking it up nicely. Very careful around the um, gold bits here but again we can touch those up. Just holding this so the sword doesn't flex too much and break off I'll do something similarly stupid. So that's actually showing where the colour is going quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this process uh, a couple of times. I'm going to wash down. I'm going to maybe focus the wash more towards the hilt I'm trying to get a little bit of a colour flag going on there and repeat the dry brushing a bit and then the dry brushing will form a sort of guidance and a, and a basis for doing hopefully some fairly simple uh, layering around the details with a brighter green. Okay, back after that wash. You may wonder, like, has he lost his marbles? Why is he showing his br dry brushing? The newbiest technique in the history of Nibiru. Well, it does have its role. It does have its place. As well as texture service. It's something like um, armoured plates on vehicles. You can pick out the edges nicely. And also leave a little bit of a slight graininess, which suits the more kind of natural look on a weathered, worn vehicle armour. But also this, because this is quite textured and quite crisp detail. I mean, to be honest, you could probably do the whole thing like this, but I'm going to want a bit more control at the end. I'm going to want to bring out uh, areas with bright colours. You see, the trick is really, you know, it really is dry. It's faint coats. Probably just need one more wash to get the good contrast, then I'll start on the painting proper. 
to do this go overboard on this because the color fade from bottom top is not really the, the main thrust of the sword but obviously you could do it that way if you chose I mean one thing about doing a magical sword is uh, gives you pretty much uh, free options of how you do it you could paint it pseudo fire effect blue lightning you know color fade from different metals I just thought this would be a nice nice thing to do partly because I saw those paints in the shop I thought hey that'd be quite cool right okay last bit of preliminary dry brushing try and catch some of the edges on this as well That's getting quite a nice effect already. So quite a nice effect, but not quite nice enough. So what I'm going to try and do, because this has got like a lot of angles on it, a lot of detail, I'm trying to do the minimum of blending and just focus on kind of brush strokes to get some quite um, kind of sharp light, sharp contrast on it. This may or may not work. The paint's quite thin down anyway, so. I suppose this is cheating because it's sort of giving a blend to it just by the use of the paint. Uh, now in terms of the of where to highlight on this, and um, the way I'm doing this is it's kind of magical blade with its own glow, so I don't really have to highlight according to the light, it's creating its own light. So I guess I'm going to highlight just really around the edges. Uh, I guess the theory is that the edges are where they or kind of magical interact most with the the air or whatever. Okay, I have to blend this bit. That's too much. I guess the um, the dry brushing above did more than I thought to provide uh, a kind of a vague basis for colour transitions and blends. I don't want to go overboard with the uh, highlighting, I'm keeping the areas quite small. This is sort of part of the plan of having it, it mostly dark with very vivid highlights rather than a bright colour overall. You can see I'm using a variety of techniques, some layering, some kind of go just going over the edges, some blending, some putting too much paint on and quickly having to rub it off. The dimples, I'm not really sure to do about those. I might just do a little bit of a line around those. They're not 
such an part of the important part of the blade compared to its shape and jaggy angles. Right, uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'll see what happens uh, when I do a faint dry brush of the next colour on to provide a sort of basis for that colour. This is probably even going to be fainter than the other one. It's a very uh, pale colour this. It might work given that I got sort of fairly extreme highlights. But I've obviously got to be careful I don't put too much on either in terms of creating kind of ugly kind of colour transitions or in changing the colour. Uh, too much to a pale colour. So dry, it's only really catching the edges, but that's okay. I think I don't want to uh, I'm gonna keep the highlights pretty small from now on. Right, I'm going to try some uh, highlighting this brighter colour. Uh, you have to be pretty careful with this. So do the edges first, see how that works. Just lining over the edges as I explained in a, another tutorial. Well, it's going to look pretty crisp. So just go around and do all of this. Uh, lining and then see what areas I need to build up to get more uh, colour on. As can be seen, this is obviously quite a time consuming process, um, but this is a singular area of the model I'm trying to get a specific effect for, so I have to spend a little bit longer uh, on it. If this was something to be repeated across the whole model, then I try and find a simpler technique, maybe stick more to dry brushing, for example, or just do less highlighting layers or something like that. I'm constantly having to clean my brush and pick up more paint because I've only got a tiny bit on the brush because I don't want to go overboard on the uh, on the surface of the model. But that does mean the paint dries out pretty quickly.
This edge is too shallow to do with the edge of the brush, so I have to paint it on. Takes quite a bit of care. <laughs> quite nervous doing that. Uh, I'm going to paint all the the wee scratches in the same way. Again, this is sort of this fine edging. I'm quite liking it's bringing a brightness to aspects of it without uh, changing the colour too much. Okay, that's one side. I don't have to take a break because my eyes are going fuzzy. Come back, do the other side and see about enhancing. Maybe do a little bit of blending on this and then go for a small, really bright finishing highlight. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use a thin down version of the pale green and just do a little um, light blending or fading towards the uh, most prominent points. I want to highlight these a little bit uh, brighter uh, in the forthcoming stages uh, but I want a little bit of a transition there so got some thin down paint I'm just going to hate it maybe blend it if needed don't want to put too much of this on It should make the transition to apply to paint on the very top highlights a little bit uh, more natural. Well, a little bit smoother. It's not really supposed to be a natural blade. Using very dilute paint here, so just use the translucency of it rather than having a feather too much. a bit more on the uh, upper end of the blade. that and give that a little bit adds quite a lot of character to it it's not about the pure pure lines but it's got a little bit depth to the color so I'm gonna do that a little bit more I think I like the way that's worked Okay, before the final highlighting, I've got a couple of touching up jobs to do. Uh, first thing I'm going to uh, re-darken these nicks to make sure they stand out. With just some um, slightly dilute black. Not too dilute because I'm going to have a... Uh, then I'm going to darken things down slightly but try and keep some of the colour in the upper area. So I've just got some um, thin down uh, green wash and I'll put some black wash on and then on the bottom and then some black wash on the bottom 
and then apply the green wash towards the top to kind of get a sort of transition in the middle. So that's the black wash. That would dull the colour a bit too much, but I do want it to be slightly darker at the bottom, so I'll keep that there. Then towards the top, I've got this dilute green wash. Bring that down so it meets the black. I should also uh, smooth the colour a little bit because I haven't been very neat with any blends. Should be ready for a final bright highlights. Okay, the wash seemed to work okay, although it did tone down a little bit too much. I did another faint dry brush over the top. It's slightly rough, but I suppose that'll be okay. Again, I might do another, yet another wash or a glaze at the end. Bring it, kind of um, building up the colour like this is no bad thing for this, this one area. I don't really have to repeat any of the techniques and stuff, so I can, uh, can fart around a bit. So I'm going to mix some white. Uh, and pale green and get a bright highlight just an edge highlight on the go this won't be the whole edges it'll be the most pointy bits uh, this is will be a fairly bright color so I'm going to use it sparingly A little bit of trial and error here to work out what's what works best but always err on the side of putting less paint on and see what happens. Not going along the edges fully, I'm just doing like the corners, the pointiest bits. It sort of gives the vague effect of there being a sort of glow concentrated where the material becomes the sharpest. Do a little bit on the wee next too, again not too much. Okay, I'm just going to do another very faint um, glaze of the green again. That's very dilute. Just hopefully tie the, uh, tie the colours together, compensate a bit for the dry brushing. And then one more stage. So this is quite experimental. I really was trying a different, you know, some different techniques on here to see what happened. Uh, Probably could do this a little bit more efficiently. Right, the uh, mercifully final stage. Just do the very brightest highlights and the very sharpest edges. Again, this is quite a really pale colour, so it just should just bring kind of unearthly glint to it, without compromising the overall dark look. So this is a further mixture of white and the pale green. So I'm going to apply this sparingly. And if I need, 
need more of it on I can whoa that's not sparing is it let's try that again if I need more of it on I can always add to it These sort of final touches, and a tiny bit of a really bright colour that makes gives something a glow, even if it's inherently quite dark. I do like these kind of point, accentuating these points here, really uh, make it look like a pointy sword, which is which is a good thing. Mm, do a couple more of them. Okay, it's not perfect, but I think it's. I'm quite pleased with how sharp edged it looked, and the colour is okay, even if it's maybe a little bit rough in places. Uh, I could keep going, keep trying to smooth it up and stuff, but I'm tired. So I'm going to varnish this, call it a day, and come back for a final video, which should be just finishing off and assessing the painting process.